I got something you might want to see here. Meet me as soon as you can. I could use some backup. There we go. And yes, I totally did have to fast forward time again. So now it's been another three days, and now a quest popped up. Hooray! So I guess that'll just be what I do whenever... Like, I want to proceed with the story because, like... I like this game, but I'm about ready for it to wrap up, I think. Just because, like... Ow! Oh, Jesus, you really got me. I like this game, but there's just an issue where, like, the mechanics are kind of at their limit now. Like, look at the world and I'm like, what do you do now? Like, I have a base, the base has resources, I've upgraded the stuff. That's about it. <laughs> I have 19 people, I can keep getting more people, I suppose, that's about it. Uh... So hopefully the next game has a bit more of a progression to it. Because I stuck with the first base for a while, then I stuck to the switch to this base, and there just... Uh, there wasn't too much upkeep to do, and mechanically... There wasn't much to the process of upgrading, because you mostly just get a bunch of uh, construction materials, and then just say, upgrade all these things, build all these things, and then you're done. And then mechanically, at that point, there's not a lot to do in the open world anymore. You get a few randomly generated missions that are the same three missions over and over again, which are like, go kill the special infected, help this person that's in trouble, or some another kind of helping a person that's in trouble, I suppose. And those aren't very interesting. So this store, this one's blown open too, apparently, even though we didn't, that's not the one we were at. Weird. Uh, so it's kind of a bummer when you think about it, how much there's not that much to it. And like, when you go to upgrading facilities, there's like a, there's like a single rank of upgrading. So what I'm finding here is that I'm finding what you essentially usually find when you play a Steam game that's like an early access. Which is that you'll have this really promising gameplay loop that's really cool and you want to see where it goes. And then you press a few hours in and you're like, oh wait, there's actually no more layers left. <laughs> before, you, before long you're like, oh crap, now that I understand the game, because for a while this game benefited a lot from me not understanding it yet. So I was playing it wrong for a while and that helped me have a continual sense of discovery for a while. But now that I know how basically every mechanic works and the progression systems work, uh, it's actually, there's actually not that much to the game now. And it's actually surprisingly... It does actually, it, the, the sandbox doesn't have as much depth as I thought it did originally. And so now I'm kind of just ready to just finish up the story. So I'll probably just keep fast forwarding time with the zombie standard time so I can just do the remaining story missions and then call it quits. There are two expansions to this game. But, I, but if this is all that the open world has to offer me, then I might not play them. I don't know if they added any, any interesting mechanics, but I don't think that they will. I think it'll probably be either a new map or possibly more likely just this map, but from a different perspective for a different series of story missions. But I will say that this game has been fun and it's intrigued me to the point where I'm very excited to see how the next game turns out when they have a more focused development because this has potential, but I, it does feel like an incomplete game, kind of. Shit. Is he still alive? Yeah, not for long by the look of it. Gotta get out of here. I... I can't, I can't stay. Easy, soldier. What happened to you? I'm too sick. Left me behind. L left all the sick ones behind. <laughs> Guess that's why they always say... Don't drink the water. We got a term for this in the army. That term is FUBAR. You better get going. Yeah. O okay, sure. Leave the house. Confirmed. We are Zed free here. Oh god, there's a corpse just stabbed at the wall. That's creepy. Let's get out of here. That guy did- that, that was the return of the death rattle. Whoa. I've been thinking about what our dying friends said about the water. Right before they locked me out, the science geeks were talking about something they found up at the reservoir. Now I'm thinking we ought to go check it out. Happy to help. Let's move out then. Right, you shot him. Whoa, that- what? And would do that? That's amazing. Look how warped it is. That's crazy. Maybe we could eventually do that. Oh god. Military zombies. Okay, let's go. Get in. There we go. 
Oh, kind of missed my chance there. There we go. Got it. But I don't want to come off as harsh in this game because I like it quite a bit. I just... You can like something but also think it feels incomplete. Which is kind of what happened a bit with uh, Final Fantasy 15 and uh, Metal Gear Solid 5 actually both felt incomplete for a variety of reasons. Although I was more positive about Metal Gear Solid 5 than I was from Final Fantasy 15, which I, because that game was unfortunately the, the the story was a disaster. So what else did you find out? Do you know where the army went? Bugged out. Well, the ones that weren't sick or hurt at least. You saw what they did with them. This whole operation's been a chuckle fuck from day one, and your people seem to be the only ones with your heads on the outside of your collective asses. Just sorry your reward for that looks like death by super cholera. That's a lot of bodies. That's a lot of bodies. I will say that one thing that's probably worth criticizing, though, is the fact that this game was re-released as, as a supposed to, like, redone, remastered edition or whatever. Like, this is the big, like, second release where they want you to buy the game again, and it still feels weirdly incomplete. That's a weird choice. Maybe should have just waited for the sequel instead of re-releasing the same game two years later. You know, when we first set up camp here, the captain designated this as our R and R spot. <laughs> Short of sitting on our bunks jerking off, all we were allowed to do with our free time was come up here, swim a few laps, and try to pretend MREs were suitable barbecue fodder. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> In retrospect, I'm not sure which I regret more. So you're super dead, right, Tan? He's got black fever. We're we gonna find out the water is corrupt. Yep, that's like a pile of bodies, isn't it? I recognize some of this. It's the same shit the Geek Squad was carting around when they were trying to find out what caused this. Huh? What's it do? Fuck if I know. I'm just a professional bullet stopper. They don't waste big words on me. They must have bailed in a pretty big goddamn hurry to leave all this behind. Let's see if we can get a better look. I'm loaded up. See you back at base. Roger that. We'll be waiting. Yeah, that's a disaster. Oh, shit. Yeah, succinctly put. Now, it's been a while since I read my field survival manual, but I'm pretty sure dead guys rotting in your water supply is what's known as a bad thing. We're gonna have to leave the valley, aren't we? I mean, we can't keep drinking this. Uh, there's only one way out if you don't have air support. The pass back by the fairgrounds. It links up with the main highway after about ten miles. Trouble is, the army blocked it off when they left. Probably trying to stop whatever this is from spreading. Well, then how do we get out? Uh, I'm not sure yet. I got a couple of leads I can check out. Meantime, your people ought to start stockpiling supplies. I don't know what things will be like on the outside, but I doubt it's good. There we go. Yeah, we need to get the hell out of here, as it turns out. Because that's a nightmare. So it sounds like this game- is it- whoa, where'd he go? Did he just disappear the moment I looked away? Oh, there he is. Dude, you made- whoa, cause that's how it's happening, you're teleporting. Weird. Okay. Are you coming with me, or...? Okay, bye. Interesting how that happens. That's a good example of how the game feels in incomplete, is that kind of nonsense. Like, bye, I guess we just stopped being friends midway through this mission. Yeah, I never realized how much I took for granted the idea of how often, uh... In GTA games and whatnot, and in Saints Row and everything, like, you'll do a mission with a dude, and then you'll, like, drive him home or something. Because, like, it's so bizarre to have them just run off into the wilderness, especially... Like, it, it'd be weird enough in those games, because you're like, don't you need to drive home? Like, I guess he called it an Uber or something. But in these games, it's a post-apocalyptic nightmare, and he's gonna die. If we clear some of them out, it'll make things easier for us. For a while, anyways. Anything at home I should be worried about? Oh, we've got a horde sighting. You got uh oh this? Because it won't be a problem. Oh, the outpost destroyed the horde. Kind of undoes the whole risk, doesn't it? Just in case, though. Just expand the traps real quick. Just in case. 
But it's super weird to have them run off into the wilderness like that just because I'm like, aren't you gonna, like, die alone on foot? They don't even, like, hop in a car. They're like, just run around on foot. I'm like, what are you doing? That's how everyone dies. Ah! The reason I'm bringing up criticisms now is because a few reasons. One, this is the moment where, like, I stopped caring about the open world a little bit because I'm like, I f just feel like I can't do anything meaningful anymore. Like, I feel like I've beaten the open world to some extent. Uh, but also because the sequel's coming out and I'm really interested in where that goes. Like, this game's neat, but the sequel, if they really... It's up! Coming in hot! Hello? More zombie hordes? There you if go. Don't say I never gave you. Oh, anything. I think they got wiped out again. Hmm. What you got? Oh, you know, some stuff. I think they've also been. Uh, yeah, I think they got wiped out again. Uh, if if this next game comes out, which I think comes out this year, like soon-ish, if the next game if the next game comes out and benefited from like a very focused development cycle, now that the identity of the franchise has been figured out. They add multiplayer, and they add, like, and if they expand upon the sandbox elements, and the survival elements, and base management elements, and, uh, resource management, and character management elements. We're gonna tell everybody about this, right? I mean, we're not just gonna leave. My point is that if they can, if they can expand on all these mechanics, meaningfully, and really hunker down and, and do right by the idea that this game sets forth, then the sequel could be really, really good. Like, it could be up there with the other games that I consider the the potential game of the year candidates for this game. Because, like, right now... Right now, my favorite games I've played this year are Fidel, uh, Zelda, Breath of the Wild, Prey, and Pyre. And, like, State of Decay 2, if they can really follow up on what I like about this game, but then have the proper depth to really give it legs for more than, like, a handful of hours, then that could be great. Because, like, I'm, I might, because, like, my issue here is that the, the basic mechanics are interesting, but I think I would have been done with the basic gameplay loop and base management stuff within, like, five hours if I already had figured it out. Like, the, so the primary thing that gave this game uh, a decent amount of length was my ignorance of how it worked. But then once that don't, but you can only be ignorant of a game once, and then before long it would just, it would quickly fall apart and become a game that just, you just can solve relatively quickly, which seems like not ideal for an open world game. Where are these hordes that are apparently going at my base? I don't want to leave while that's happening. Oh, that one. Oh yeah, they're way out there. Okay. Let's go run them over with my car. Yeah, that's a decent example, like, of how I progressed as a player. Is once upon a time, I'd be like, oh no, the zombie horde mission, I'm screwed, how do I deal with that? Nowadays, it's like, eh, you put up your outposts, you tell them to expand your traps, you run some assholes over. That'll thin the problem out pretty quickly. It's fine. So, like, they're gonna have to step up their game in the sequel, because now that I understand this game, it has to be challenging for new reasons, because... If it just comes down to understanding the game the way I had to understand this game, especially if it's the same game-ish, then there might not be it might the game might not provide me with much in the way of challenge or inter interesting game uh, mechanics to grapple with. Because like once upon a time dealing with a zombie horde was desperate, but now I know. What was that? I thought I saw something behind me. Now I just I just know what to do. And the game does not respond by getting by raising compl uh, complexity. Or introducing new new threats. Damn, the zombie horde mission's really good for morale because you get a, a morale boost for every single zombie horde, and it's sending a ton of them at you. Damn, that'll max out morale. Hey, look at those stat. Look at my resources. They're doing great. I got eight hundred influence, tons of morale. We're doing a okay. Now I just gotta wait for the next story mission to show up. Getting into more horde trouble, huh? So now I'm running around as Marcus, my original character. I figure if we're getting close to late game, I might as well just play as Marcus for a bit because he's got all the crazy stats and at some point I won't be really increasing them anymore. No new story mission has cropped up quite yet. Wow, that's a lot of dots on the map. Holy crap. Holy crap. I don't feel like that doesn't normally show up on that like crazy, crazy frequency. 
So it says it says hordes are heading my way right now. Somebody's like dying in this house. What the hell? I'm using Cleo weapons right now. Oh Jesus! Wow, that guy's about to die. Is it Jackson again? Really? Oh no, I think it's the guy I was just playing as. I think Jacob. Yeah, Jacob wants to wants me to clear out a uh, infestation, and I'm game. But for this moment, I'm using a Cleo machete and a Cleo, oops, some sort of Cleo rifle. I'll get to that in a second. And it has silencer on it, which is nice. Yeah, Cleo DMR, Cleo machete. I think this is just items we got from the Cleo drops. I think that's why they're called that. So this character's getting pretty set up right now with a bunch of gear. Oh, the infestation's right here. Ha <laughs> ha! Got decked in the face. Yeah, the uh, the incoming hordes are actually still pretty far off. How many of these things are there? Is it full of those screamer guys again? Yep, there's one. Oh, that didn't give me progress. Oh, are you the thing I have to kill? I did. That wasn't so tough. <laughs> There's one here, too. That was the other one. That was a weird... That was a weird situation. The in I both didn't really clear out the infestation as far as the enemy count goes, but also, like... I was supposed to kill one screamer that was wandering around, but there was like three other screamers. Weird. It's interesting that the area was just filled with uh, screamers that just didn't count towards the total, basically. Oh crap, the other one's over here too. So it seems like one sort of punishment for the time that passes is that when I go forward in time, the game seems to like to spawn tons of hordes these quests. So I get to play cleanup. I'll do it. You can cross a lot of people Another one over here. You know, if you wanted to claim dip, Hi. Bye. Still satisfying. Is it like a special zombie horde? Its icon looks weird. Oop. I was going a little slow, so the camp kind of came off. There we go. Any more hordes? Morale's doing great, that's for sure. It's filled right back up. These zombie hordes are great for morale, which is weird because, like, it's like the... When you think about zombie survival situations, the worst thing that could ever happen, basically, is giant hordes coming at your base. On a regular basis, in Walking Dead and several other forms of zombie fiction, like, that's the thing that wipes out the base, and basically ends the movie, or season, or whatever, is, like, this, the, a, a big horde coming straight at the base, and that being impossible to deal with. But in this game, it's like, it's turning into casual spore, like, oh look, zombie hordes are back! Let's, uh, wipe them out to increase morale. Click. All it cost me is a little car durability that magically repairs in this dystopian future where we can somehow repair these cars without much trouble. Interesting. I have questions about that too. <laughs> Did one of my tires come off because my vehicle sounds weird now. No, we're still we're still good. Hello. It's also interesting seeing the game make attempts to try to define exactly what a horde is and like how many meet, how many people are, are a horde or where's the exact threshold for the kill that needs to happen that makes it suddenly not a horde. Because the surprise is that I can clear a zombie horde or a zombie infestation and then I'll still see that uh, there's more of them in the group. I'm like, how did I beat it exactly? Seems like I didn't. Alright, let's park this poor bastard so he can get repaired. Poor thing. But I like my trucks for number for obvious reasons, so 
Let's get you not broken. I'll see you later. What the hell? Thanks for coming to get me. I'm ready to leave now. Take care. Wow, I forgot you were in the car. <laughs> you he actually startled me because I forgot he was in the car from the infestation mission that happened a while ago. Notice, notice this, by the way. They seem to really be in, the people that made this game seem to be in the Lovecraft. There's a uh, there's a uh, Elder God like joke video game, and then there's this thing. It's like a giant Cthulhu in the ocean with a sailboat. If you go around more, there's probably more artwork throughout the game that references Cthulhu and other similar things. Not really a major thing to point out, just noticing that that seems to be a reoccurring thing. Look at this machete, by the way. See if I can get it up close. By jamming the camera into the wall. So it has Cleo... It actually says Cleo machete on the machete, on the blade it says that. And it's got this, this sort of curve that goes... Weirdly, it actually hooks into the direction of its uh, impact. So, st it turns out I've, I've made this base sustainable, I guess, because despite the fact that when I look at these things, it says that I have negative on everything except for fuel. If you look at the top left corner, uh, fuel, food, and medicine are all over maximum now, which is still concerned what that means. Uh, and it looks like ammo and building materials are actually going up every day instead of down. So at this point, everything should go blue sooner or later, and the space is just presumably infinitely sustainable now. Has 19 people, all the stats go up all the time, nobody's died... like ever? I think the only two pe I think the only people that died w were during the diversion missions and d from Black Fever, which hasn't happened in f forever either. So I think we're safe now. I think this base will just sustain itself indefinitely now. And I just gotta get those last story missions to trigger. Somebody's broadcasting something. If you're hearing this, this is Cleo. Order derived. Balaam Angels 40, 10 mics. Posit 1 1 Tango Mike Papa, 2 5 Kilo 0 5 Mike. Sounds like we've got another supply drop incoming. Be careful. You know zombies love radio beacons for some reason. Another Cleo time. Also, I've got some excess to jump off. Boop, biddy boop. Because time has traveled again. Now I'm at 99 building materials. Holy crap. Where were you in my life before? I guess my reshuffle worked out. Is it really there? That's a diversion request. Barrel hunt. Oh no. The Wait, do I not know where the Cleo is yet? I guess that was just the setup for the coordinates, and it's not- it's gonna come in later. Ah, dang it. Hey, I think we got a plan for getting out of this shithole. Meet us out by the pass, we'll go over it. It's about goddamn time, Eric. I've been waiting for an eternity for you to call me. I actually haven't heard... is it that one? Oh, there's supply drops here, too. That took a while to show up, too. Okay. Let's do both of those things. Oh, you're all white smoky. Dang it. Yeah, it's actually... Thank God for editing, because it's actually turning into quite a time-consuming ordeal to wait for the next story mission to show up. I've relaunched the game a few times now, and then also just kind of driven around at random for ten minutes at a time while being loaded into the game. Just being like, is, uh... Is something gonna happen soon? Please? Now we got two things, though. Supply drop and Eric's, Eric's next mission. Ally in trouble needs an escort home. Who is it this time? I just ask I just I just rescued Dominic again. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Ooh, that water. Let's be careful here. Sudden changes in height and stuff do bad things to my character in this game. That's a good thinning of the horde. Oh, beast guy. That's a problem. There we go. <laughs> the beast enemies are so ill-equipped for dealing with a vehicle. Like, the bloaters can hurt you inside your vehicle with the smoke stuff, and the other guys can hurt you inside your vehicle by just being so big that if you hit a juggernaut, it actually stops your vehicle cold. 
but the beast guys? Nope. Not a. So interestingly, I thought that the. Uh, I was thinking these missions were story. But it really seems like that's not the case now. I think it's just a periodic event. Oh, can you guys go away? I'm trying really hard to loot this thing. I mean, I can just do this over and over again if I have to. Turn it off. Turn it off. There we go. Ooh. More new weird guns and whatnot. Ah! Bad. <laughs> Bad thing. Don't do that. I'm loaded up. See you back at base. We'll be ready. Stop. 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 There we go. No dice. We're gonna get ourselves some more Cleo items. All right. Back to base, all stocked up. Then we'll switch to a different truck, go pick up Eric, and go save the day? Maybe? Is that how this works? Yeah. <laughs> Pshwink. I'm most... When I think about the sequel, I'm interested in thinking about, like, how is multiplayer going to balance into this game? Right now, having an additional person wandering around with you makes you incredibly safer. So if that additional person was also a human player, that could be a hell of a tip of the scale at that point. Just to feel like I'm running a car park here. All right. More ammo for me. How much can I fit? Just that. Awkward. Three machined suppressors. Damn. I'm slowly making sure that I install suppressors on various people's weapons, because obviously it's a great thing for not getting swarmed with enemies all the time when things go bad. And man, I am starting to get a lot of them, actually. Let's see. Excess of snacks. Yeah, I'm running around with like 60 shots now for my gun, too. Because I've pretty much set this guy up for the intention of using him during the Eric missions. So my goal is to hopefully have him all set for a really big fight if one comes. And one of the one of the main ways of doing that is just to make sure I have a, a not only a, one of the larger guns, an actual straight-up rifle for once, but also more than just one reload of ammo. Just so I don't get into trouble. You fi you gotta figure the game's gonna escalate at some point. Be weird if it didn't, right? Here we go. Okay, so. Let's look into some upgrades again. Low slice, dismembers target's leg, or slow, put, slow attack that automatically decapitates, decapitates a single target. Ooh. That could be interesting. Guaranteed to, de to decapitate a target? I'll try it. Rage. Gives you a small amount of stamina back when you kill an enemy on melee. More stamina is good. I'm probably not going to unlock anything else anytime soon, am I? Let's just go for this one. Now I can just hold LB and then hit X for a decapitation. That'll hopefully prove to be worth it. Alright, time to visit Eric. Exit strategy, that sounds pretty final. Yeah, ally in trouble. That's when the repetition that was one of the things that made me really realize the repetition was setting in. Was just realizing that like, oh look, an ally is in trouble in the same building for the seventh time. Like it's so common for an ally to get stuck in the very final house at the edge of the neighborhood on, on top of that hill. 
over and over again, and I'm like, I can't, I can't rescue a guy from this house 20 times. That's, that's too many times. At some point, I just want to burn that house down so nobody can get lost in it ever again. That seems like it'd be my exit strategy for that repetition. <laughs> now, if this game does something really cool, then it, it would, what would, 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 would be really cool is if my entire group of survivors that I put together walks out as a singular mob and, like, goes towards the exit and we're all, like, fighting for survival and we don't want to lose anybody and, like, more and more bad things are happening but everyone's armed to the teeth because of all the resources I've accumulated and they are all covering each other because it's 19 people and we're all just trying to get over the border or something to get out of this place. That'd be a really cool ending if that happened. But we'll see. That'd be the good way of mixing mechanics and story because I, I built up this base and I want to see that base get used. No. No. Alright, here's the situation. This pass is the only way out of the valley, and the army clearly doesn't want us leaving anytime soon. So why don't we just climb it? We don't know what's on the other side of that pass. We're going to need food, medicine, transportation. You know, the usual. So, what? We tear it down? Uh, no way we can tear down this barricade by hand. Zeds would have us for breakfast before we made it ten feet. Can we blast our way through? What? I'm thinking outside the box. No, I like it. It's got a certain devil-may-care panache. So, what's the plan? I guess we need to find some explosives. Big ones. What about the other survivors? We can't just abandon them and hope they figure out the problem with the water. You're right. Start putting the calls out to everyone we know. Tell them we're getting ready to move. We're all getting out of here. That's... Hell of a thing to say, huh? That was actually weird dialogue there too. It's like, can we blow it up? What? I'm thinking outside the box. I'm like, yeah, we get. No, that's you're not saying anything weird. We literally just blew up the entryway to get here like two missions ago. Like that's. No one should act like she's saying anything weird because just a moment ago, we blew our way into the gate to get exactly where I am right now. Like that's that's established in the story. Like, it's actually elegant storytelling to be like, yeah, we're you know that thing we did earlier, we're gonna do that again. Because it's like, it's an established mechanic that the, the, that the story allows. It's only weird that somebody was acting like it was weird. <laughs> huh. Is that it? Am I in trouble? That's it. I gotta say, these, these story missions are really underwhelming. I gotta say. Because usually it's like, go meet some dude and then just say hi. There's actually multiple story missions where I just drive up to a location and then a cutscene plays and then that's the whole mission. Like nothing, no gameplay really is involved in the story mission half the time. It's just weird to think about how this game is stru structured. And I'm also wondering like, the place where the judge and the sheriff were and the Wilkerson's and a bunch of other storylines like, and then the people that live over here like, are those ever going to come up again? Are those over? Because, like, none of them had... None of them really had conclusions. The closest one to a conclusion is that there was, like, an abrupt, horrible death where the judge and the sheriff died. I'm like, oh, no, random tragedy. But, like, there was no follow-up quest where we, like, liberate all the people that live there. Like, they just stayed there without them. It's like, oh, okay, so, like, we're not gonna... Like, maybe take them in for shelter or something, you know? Help people out. I'm just, I'm getting continually weirded out by the, how the story structure, like, I think, I think these military missions are the only missions left. I think all the other storylines just get dropped, but even their missions are just like, hey, go over here. Oh no, that guy died of the black fever. Hey, go over here. We should go over this wall later, but not right now. Okay. That's the whole mission? All right. I guess, I guess I'll go back to just waiting inside this gate for days, until you call me again. <laughs> it's the type of thing that would be remedied if the game had super complex, interesting, ever-evolving stuff in the sandbox. But as you can see, I've basically mastered the sandbox at this point. I'm not losing anybody, and all of the stats in the top left corner are just going up at all times. My influence goes up, all of my resources go up. I'm getting a larger and larger pool of vehicles. 
everyone's safe, morale goes up really fast whenever it drops. And that's just... So I'm kind of stuck just waiting. Which makes it a little unfortunate that the game's mechanically designed that I'm so that I'm supposed to wait. Which is, uh, never came up for a long time because I was being engaged with the, with the open world, but now that I'm not being engaged with the open world anymore, then it's kind of... You kind of feel trapped when the, whenever you do a story mission, because you do a story mission that's over in five minutes, and then it's like, Now wait, I'll call you back later, eventually. And you literally wait! Huh.